Okay, we're back. Ito, meron na tayo pumapasok pong mga text dito. Basahin na po natin from 0917605-5739. Ang Mindanao ang dapat pagtuunan ng tulong. Na pag iwanan na ng infrastructure ng government, may peace and order issue pa. Marami pang mahirap ang pangtawid gutom sa Maynila lang. Politika na ang inaatupak ng ilan. Alright, ah... Uh, Well, I think a little bit of overgeneralization in this uh, particular text na napag-iwanan ng ang, ano, because I know the government is trying to hasten infrastructure development in Mindanao. No? Tama. Especially in the ARMM region. Di ba? Uh, as part of the uh, development of peace Kaya, in the area. Kaya tinutulungan nga namin ang, ang, ang Mindanao, Ray. Hindi nila makakaintindi, hindi, hindi lang sila makakaintindi kung paano po yung struktura ng elektrisidad. Napaka-complex, napaka-complicated yan. At even the president has already seen uh, the way it should go, but he still cannot convince the people of the okay, leaders of, what's of, he going of, to of do? Mindanao. Is he just well, going to sit by because no, they cannot no, no, convince no, them? No, no, no. Ano may yari? No, be, they, they've already put on stream all of the uh, idle plants there. Like I told you, mga embedded plants. Oh. Halimbawa, meron kong Del Monte dyan na may, may malaking pabrika na oh. nakatiwangwang lang doon yung uh, power plant nila. They, may, they might have one or two megawatts. There's a total of 74 megawatts of embedded plants in Mindanao. Oh. They're going to connect that now. Uh, ikalawa, yung uh, idle the uh, Iligan Diesel Power Plant, 100 megawatts. They're already rehabbing it now. So within How seven long? to eight months. Seven ah, to eight months. Kalayo. Yes. So in other words, we cannot expect... Rehab lang oh. seven to eight months We na. cannot expect the brownouts to be resolved in one or two months. Well, we need na natin to. At, at the earliest, siguro baka katapusan ng taon or, er, or sometime next year. Hindi ho. Because uh, it's during the summer months when you're using air condition, uh -oh. that the peak demand really rise. So, uh -oh. itong pinaka-peak sa Mindanao ngayon. At, at sa buong Pilipinas, March, okay. April, May. Summer eh, di ba? Uh -oh. Okay. So, bababa rin yung peak demand nila. Pagkatapos, uulan na. Starting June, July. So, more water now is being fed into August Pulangi. The next problem is next summer. What to do then? <laughs> yes, but we will but have now. But by then, hindi ba meron na kamo mga embedded plants? We will have now 174 plants, huh? additional megawatts plus another. How much another do they need for the uh, rehab? No, I mean in terms of the shortage now. Ano ba ang shortage sa Mindanao ngayon? If it were today, they have a peak demand of about 1,300, uh -huh. and they have a supply of about 1,000, about a thousand. About a okay, thousand. So about 300 short. Okay. Depende now. That can be covered by all the stopgap kasi meron pang 100 megawatts na power barge na pupunta doon. But it will take 7 to 8 months. By so the rehabilitation summer, of the plant plus the power barge, that's going to be about 150 megawatts. By next summer, Ray, Next summer pa yun? My, by next summer, they will have about 1,300. Ito lang ang problema. Wala silang reserva. Okay. And you always need about a 20 to 30 percent reserve. So if any plant goes down, may sisipa ka agad. Uh -oh. In uh, Luzon and Visayas, so you, cannot, you, cannot, you cannot match it so equally. Talagang kailangan, maski na generator mo, maski na rated at let's say uh, one or ten k, uh, kVA, you cannot use more than seven to eight. Hindi even, mo pwedeng gamitin even, yung even maximum output. Even if you output. could, let's say uh, here in Luzon, magda-down ang swal. Swal uh -oh. is 1,200 megawatts. Uh -oh you got to have 1,200 megawatts in reserve. So we will get that from CBK, Kaliraya, Botokan, Kalayaan, Power Plant. We will get that from other uh, plants. So you need that reserve. Okay. The situation here in Luzon and the Visayas, is it conducive? Let's say, hindi baka tayo magkakaroon naman ng shortage dito sa Luzon at saka sa Visayas next summer? Uh, we have several new plants coming on stream. Right now lang, we have already a 2,000 megawatt excess in Luzon lang, huh? Uh -oh. Then we have 600 new megawatts GN power, coal, and then marami nag expand So, everything is going well here. Okay, question. Is the government committed now to pursue the interconnection between Visayas and Mindanao, regardless of what the politicians might yeah. feel? The government is, uh, we've already talked to NGCP, which is National Grid. Uh, they're finalizing the uh, new... Uh, Costings. Costings, uh, it will be ready in about six months. And uh, 
but that's just the study, ah. Oo. Pagkatapos another three, three to four years, depending upon... Hindi ba nila i-update na lang yung study of 2004? Yan ang sinabi ko sa kanila. <laughs> ha? Huh? They want to start all over again. Oh my goodness, Ibang reinventing the wheel. Eh, government noon eh. Oh. Eh ngayon, private. Ay, in other words, sasabihin nila, ano, uh, mali yung, yung government study. That means, in other words, they want to load it up because... They, kasi, I, is it, well, you were telling me na hindi na, it does not necessarily follow that when a facility becomes privatized, that the price will go up. Yeah. Maybe, politically, it will, they will not allow it to go up in the beginning, but I think in the long run, if you take a look at five to ten years, since there is no subsidy involved, those rates are still going to be much higher than present rates. Even if today you start out a little bit lower, you by are, the five years you are comes, correct that new 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 equipment will always be more expensive you've got inflation oh. so you, there's at least minimum three three to four four percent inflation yes that is why uh, ang, ang, uh, ang po is that when the government sold a lot of plants they were producing as you say kung 100 megawatts 70 lang kasi hindi na ayos eh. Alam mo, there's always been a problem with government <laughs> dito, eh, ha? You buy something, you, let's say you buy a motor vehicle, they don't provide for maintenance. They don't provide anything to keep the thing running efficiently and well. Diba? And it's, I don't know what the answer to that is. I guess it's just simply political will. From 639178918341, as a senator, why doesn't Senator Osmeña file a law in the Senate compelling DOST to sponsor scholars will master the development of deuterium as an alternative source of power. I think deuterium, if I'm correct, is something that you find very deep in, yeah. in the sea. Actually, it's... It's, 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 it's uh, all over the world. It's all over the world. <laughs> yeah. It's not something unique. No, no. It's but only the Americans and, and, and the Russians and the Japanese who have the technology to go down that deep. Uh -huh. Even our, uh, our bankas cannot get that deep. Uh -huh. So... Uh, Yes, the DOST, the DOST marami scholar ho. But in order to go up to the high level of technology, they have to migrate. Kasi wala ho kaming budget dito pang, pang research. Eh. Yeah. Uh, well, this is of course another issue that should take the attention of government and that we are not developing any kind of strategy to de determine what skills we need here by w and in other words, to try to build some kind of R&D uh, environment that can keep us uh, on par with some of the, the nations in the world. You are absolutely correct. We have never paid much attention to our human resources. All right. And uh, even in the latest study po ng uh, ADB na natapos last year, sabi nila, about power, ha? sabi nila, kulang na kulang kayo ng mga technicians at nakakaintindi ng power dito sa Pilipinas. You've never developed. Yeah. Uh, so Which is sad, no? So, we cannot find the right people to man the Energy Regulatory Commission. We cannot find the right people to man <laughs> and then and, and the problem there is we're, we're still just struggling with the problem of K That's plus 12. Right. And we just, you know, a long way from the technology needs that we have. From 0915-348-9025, Lee Savior of Antipolo City. Good evening. What regulation can be done to overcome natural monopoly of energy as manipulated by political interests now? that modernization relates to job opportunity. Thanks and more power. Salamat po. Uh, yung monopoly ako, yung transmission, natural monopoly po yan. Nobody is going to build a second transmission line, a second highway. Uh -huh. yung, li yung linya po na puputa sa bahay ninyo, gaya ng linya ng Meralco, natural monopoly rin po yun. Nobody, Meralco does not have a monopoly in their franchise. Wala na, distribution company lang sila ngayon eh. But, they, but they have contracts in, with independent power producers, no? mga IPP. They do not have a monopoly to be the only one to deliver power in Metro Manila or anywhere. Uh -huh. Except that nobody in his right mind would be stupid enough to put up another, <laughs> yung mga linya ng Meralco. Balulugi lang yung... Eh, sa, so yung that's, that's why they call it... Mga linya nila dito, oh, sama-sama na, it's so ugly already, maglalagay pa that's tayo ng they, somebody. That's why they call it a natural monopoly. So uh -huh. all over the world, the distribution and the transmission are natural monopolies. Ang ginawa po namin, yung generation nagiging competitive ngayon. Okay. So they now... With open access coming on stream about September okay. this year, those those rates 
by the IPPs are not controlled by the Energy Regulatory Board? The IPPs are already signed contracts. Okay, but it, it's it, a signed contract. It, it's uh, it was con signed, signed during the Ramos during the Ramos administration oh. with the Napocor. Okay, and so that is where so many so much of the stranded. We've costs been trying are. to break it, uh -oh. <laughs> but we cannot <laughs> because the constitution uh, protects the sanctity of contracts. Yeah, <laughs> well, zero so nine one seven eight two four six one six eight. Uh, Senator Serge, whatever happened to the hydropower plants in Iligan? Uh, Mindanao should be self-sufficient from Bobong of Cavite. Salamat, uh, Bobong. Tama po kayo. Noon self-sufficient tungkol sa hydropower plant. Pero you've napabayaan an, yung mga planta? No. You've got an installed capacity there of 980 megawatts between Agus River and Pulangi River. Uh -huh. And Agus has uh, several power plants nagkakaskid. Agus 1, Agus 2, Agus 4, Agus 5, Agus 6, Agus 7. And like Agus 6 has four units. No? All right. Ano po nangyari? Eh, lumalaki rin yung demand doon sa, sa Mindanao. Siyempre, so, sana lumalago rin sila. When, when, when Agus used to supply about, uh, Agus Pulangi used to supply about 75% 10 years ago of Mindanao's power needs, now it's down to 52%. Of course, naluluma na rin yung mga planta, pero ang pinakamasakit po is nawawala yung watershed. So, nasisilt ngayon yung Pinupo river. Pinuputol kasi lahat, katakot-takot ang Correct. illegal logging doon eh. Correct. Hindi lang illegal logging. Yung, for example, sa Bukid no, no you're, you're oh. familiar with Del Monte Plantation. Del Monte always had that uh, huge bamboo uh, buffer zone oh. to the river. When they uh, came in with agrarian reform, pinutol po ng mga farmers yung mga babo kasi tatanim pa sila ng pineapple at saka bananas. Wow. So, nawala po yung... <laughs> Anong gagawa natin? <laughs> Pinu pinutol yung mga kawayan, yung mga mahogany, and uh, they wanted to plant uh, bananas and pineapples. From 0926-729-2128, bakit po ba mahal ang singil ng kuryente sa Luzon? Kumparado sa Mindanao, from Noli of Antipolo. Uh, alam po dito, napakaraming IPPs nang galing sa panahon ni Ramos. Di ba nagkaroon tayo oh. ng mga 8 to 12 hour brownouts sa 1991-1992. So, Swal, 1,200 megawatts. Masinlok, 600 megawatts. Uh, Pagbilaw, 700 megawatts. Yung pinatayo ka agad. Pero mahal yung mga kwanho niyan. Ang mga kontrata niyan. At we are stuck with them for another siguro 12 years. Ganun pa kahaba ang titisi ng tao doon sa mga kontranta yun. Somebody ought to be hung by his petard, as they say. Di ba? For really, the, I think those contracts were really so ill-advised. But that's hindsight judgment. No? And uh, of course... It was worse before, about 10 years ago when, when we passed this. Because we not only had expensive power, we ordered more than we could absorb. Eh, pinapasa rin yung cost sa kwan. So this was they call stranded contracts. Uh -huh. So... You were paying for it also. Yeah, we're still paying for it. Hindi pa naman tapos yung mga stranded contracts. Hindi na stranded because our demand went up. Oh. And so it absorbed the surplus power. That Pero marami nung natira. Ilang billion ba yung natira yung mga stranded costs that until now are not dealt with? Uh, the total liabilities of PISALM is about 800 billion. Kita, kita nyo po. <laughs> lahat yun. Alam po nyo, kayo ang magbabayad doon. Wala namang ibang magbabayad doon. Sapagat lahat ng kinikita ng gobyerno, Mula sa buwis, galing din sa bulsa ng mama mo yan. Yeah, that's true. So, yung mga decision commission po talagang napakahalaga in terms of being impact ng mga decision na ito. Pero maraming, uh, malaki-laki ngayon yung receivables ng PISAL, no? The uh, Power Sector Assets and Liabilities uh, uh, Corporation, they sold the plants, but they sold it on a deferred basis, 7 years, 10 years to pay. So, ang siguro ang mga receivables po nila, mga 300 billion. So, ang, sa, ang net payables natin, mga, mga 500. Why did they sell it on installment? Because... Uh, Nobody wanted to put up the cash? No, it was 30% down naman. Mag maganda naman. But we were doing okay. You know why? Because most of those plants, they were government-owned, so they were funded with, by very low-cost ODAs. Uh -huh. So, we were paying like 2%, and then when we sold it, 
we were charging them 7, 8%. So, kumikita pa rin. Sa interest. <laughs> All right. From 0918271-5902. Saan pala sinusupply ang kuryente na galing sa Mount Apo Geothermal? From Erwin of Kidapawan City. Uh, Mount Apo, nasa kabila po. Uh, that's EDC. That's Energy Development Corporation. That was developed by uh, the government. Binili po ng Lopez Group. Pero may long-term contract ko yan. 3 pesos lang per kilowatt hour. It's got another 12 years to run. 100 megawatts po yan. Wow, napakamura. Yeah. At least at the, in terms of today's... Uh, it is cheap. It, it, it's the grid rate of, of Mindanao. Kanya siguro ayaw nilang maglagay ng iba pa kasi mapipilitan tumaas yan. Well, uh, nagpo-po sila. Pero ang, ang sabi po nila, we cannot sell it for cheaper than 490 because drilling is what's expensive. Eh. Uh Oo. -oh. You know, it's like mining. Na ho, sa sabi mo siyo, sige, si ito, at et, etong 100,000 hectares, Ray. Pero hanapin mo, <laughs> gumastos ka hanapin mo. Kung maswerte si Ray Rosa, di after spending only five million dollars, nakapong ka agad. May nakita. Pero sometimes you'll have to spend fifty million dollars. Wala ka pring zero ka pa. <laughs> from zero nine one seven five one eight zero zero one eight from Salvi De Vera, Maptra. Ay ako ako na bisibi ng Maptra. Hi, good evening po, Senator Serge. Can you help us on our electricity problem in Occidental Mindoro under the inefficient Congresswoman Amelita Villarosa in her own company, Omeco? Uh, titignan po natin uh, sa Albi sapagkat uh, I've not gotten around to Mindoro. Mindoro, ang tawag po natin dyan, off-grid. Hindi nakakonekta eh. Huh? There's no connection. Palawan, Mindoro, Marinduque, Romblon. Uh -oh. Uh, so they have to develop their own yes, power sources. Yes, Basilan, Tawi-Tawi, Sulu. That's what you call off-grid. So they have to develop their own power. Mahal talaga ang power dyan. Mahal dyan. Bakit? Why, why was That's it decided that it would kilo. be off-grid? Simply because they are separated islands. Yes, Napakamahal it's expensive. Ng yes. ng linya. At least Mindanao, Min, uh, Mindanao supplies Land about 12% of the, of, of the GDP of, of the country. Oh and uh, also of the consuming uh, co uh, consumption of electricity. So it will pay to connect it. Kasi cha, one land mas lang yun mostly. We have a very difficult country as far as electricity is concerned yeah. because of all the islands. Okay, from 0939-557-4017 from Arnaldo de la Cruz. Bukod po sa Globe Asiatic Anomaly, my Pyramid Construction Engineering Corporation Anomaly sa pag Pag-ibig, sana po mabigyan pansin ni Sen. Osmeña, dinala ko na sa office niya kahapon ang mga ebidensya. <laughs> Natanggap ko yun, ko yun, binigay ko sa staff ko, ganun kakapal lang pinadala mo, thank you, salamat po. Uh, ngunit ngayon po, uh, yung mga lawyers ko ay bising busy sa trial. Oo, no? doon sa impeachment court. Yes, because uh, talagang sabi ng Senado, you have to prioritize that, no? Pero matatapos na rin ho yun by uh, the end of uh, May. Can you, can, I mean, uh, how should, I mean, how confident are you that it will be over by the end of May? I'm 90% confident. Shouldn't you want to leave them as much leeway to really try to mount their defense? Don't they deserve that? Yes, but we already saw, even last Monday, pinagalitan na ni, ni Senate President Enrile. Sabi niya, your witnesses are useless. They're, they're only test, uh, test, te, testifying as to fees paid. Ano ba kayo? Pinagalitan na nga yung defense panel. You have no more witnesses. Ayun. Nagpalit ang isip ang, ang defense panel. They said, okay, we will bring corona. Yeah. So hopefully by Wednesday or Thursday, Chief Justice Corona will turn up in the Senate. But ayun na lang. Siguro his uh, testimony will take about three or four days. But that should be... The last, maybe one or two rebuttal witnesses will be uh, required uh, by the prosecution panel. Then after that, we should be uh, appear. But si, uh, didn't they ask uh, Secretary De Lima to to to, uh, to yes, they did to yeah. appear there. Yeah, and uh, will she? Oh yes. Oh. If she's called, she has to appear. That's a subpoena. Oh, oh. Well, she was making lots of noises that she won't appear. Yeah. Any bravado. No, she already testified there. Eh. Oh, but she can always be recalled as a witness. I mean, that's part of the, of the process. The defense has a right to recall her as a, oh. as a witness, but 
I guess she thought the defense is just trying to waste the time of the court, which is it, it is but true. It's not uh, for her, it, but whether it's true or it's not, not, it's her, not for her to not call for her that. To say. Oh. It's for the Senate to say that. That's correct. Hindi naman siya dapat mag-ano doon. Parang alam na niyan lahat. Then speaking both for the Senate and I don't know who else, no? <laughs> oh. So what's, what's your opinion about uh, this case anyway? I mean, this what is, case? I don't think, itong impeachment nito, it's nothing, I'm not talking about whether it's guilty or not guilty, that's not the issue. About the conduct of the case, uh, do, you, do you feel it's been fair on both sides? Yes, I, I, I think the prosecution was given enough leeway and the defense was also given enough leeway. And uh, they just run out of witnesses. Uh, so if they were trying to waste time, Senate President Andrile, who's a very sharp lawyer, <laughs> would say, you're wasting our time already. And he did say that last Monday. And it was only the first time he ever scolded uh, former Justice Cuevas. Huh? But he did. He said, you know, you think you can fool us. That's enough. Uh, don't, don't give us this kind of witnesses. Na, mm -mm. Uh, race driver, pay the driver's fees. Uh, who cares about that? That's not important. Mm -hmm. Okay. So from 0927-402-0325, ang Togonan elect geothermal plant sa Leyte, anong mga region po ang dinadala? Tumatawid ba sa Luzon? Yes, uh, that can be delivered to Luzon. And uh, the Tungonan plant is only charging 3 pesos to 3 pesos and 50 centavos. Mm. Of course, that's an old contract again. So uh, oh. there are some old contracts that are below okay. uh, grid rates. But on the average? On, on the average, Visayas is 4 pesos. And the power of Tungonan is signed up already. That's, that, that's still a Napocoran plant now. Oh. Okay. It signed up already with uh, various uh, distribution companies in the Visayas that they do not need to send power to Luzon. Okay. Alam mo, we're running out of time, uh, Senator Serge, but can you encapsulate, for example, what the administration is doing or intend, uh, in, intend what they intend to do regarding the power shortage uh, other, in than, uh, Mindanao, other than telling them green and buried? No, no, no. Uh, they've been able to bring out about 200 to 250 new megawatts uh -oh. within the next 12, 12 months. Next two months, sorry po, you cannot build a plant or rehabilitate a plant that fast. But within the next 12 months po, by next summer, you should have less brownouts. Ngayon, isang problema lang po. Next summer, we may be scheduled for an El Nino. That means maraming tubig. Eh, no. The opposite. Uh, it's going to be... Correct. Every three years, Kiriwi. every three years ang El Nino eh. Uh -oh. So, when El, El Nino comes, hindi po natin malaman kung gaano maapektuhan yung Agus at Pulangi doon. Is there anything that can be done in the meantime to encapsulate or to try to catch, or to create water encatchment basins? No. Nothing easy, huh? Nothing easy. You know how long it takes to build these power plants. <laughs> Tagal nga. What do you think it's going to be a factor, the opposition of the political leaders, some political leaders anyway in Mindanao? Alam mo na sa batas na yan eh. Oo. But the, the, the uh, law says, mandates that Napocor sell all its plants, all its generating plants. It already also sold the Transco. Okay? So, competition na ang ginagamit namin eh. Now, you will see the rates in Luzon go down the moment open access happens in September. Why? Because Rayo Rosa, who owns this building, can now go direct and negotiate his own generating uh, contract with Pagbilao or... Ah, they can go yes, retail? Yes. By September? By September. Pero ano naman, ano, ano naman, you know, what kind of negotiation can you have when you're such a small uh, user of power. We, we are using, uh, no, I'm talking about one megawatt and, and above. Okay. We, we will start there. That's what the law says. When ev all of the uh, infrastructure I is in place, like the, um, the new meters, then we go down to 750, then we go down to 500, then we go down to 250. Pretty soon, pretty soon, maybe in five to ten years, we'll be at household level. Na makakapindot ka na lang sa, sa computer mo. Eh, mura ngayon yung, yung pagbilaw. Bibili ako for, for, for the next month from, from pagbilaw. So there will be a market where you'll be able to bid for the uh, prices. Alam po ninyo, the power problem cannot be solved in one or two months. 
it needs forward thinking and many times ang problema natin ang tinitingnan ng pamahalan only the, the six years of their term no so the, three years or three years <laughs> <the> congressman <laughs> yeah. uh, ganon pero basically ang administration is got a six year framework yeah. and many times kulang po yan in terms of trying to establish a power policy that is far reaching in terms of its uh, uh, vision and its uh, scope it requires a lot of wisdom. It requires a lot of very, very tough decision making. And many times, ang nagiging problema, ang kaaway natin dyan ay ating sarili. Yeah. We are the ones that create this problem because kung minsan makita ng ating pananaw, hindi natin nakikita kung anong mabuti sa bansa. Well, you know, uh, Senator Serge, you have a unique perspective there when it comes to the energy problem because kita mo from the whole totality of the Philippines. And we hope that you can provide and initiate and be uh, you know proactive there so that the majority of this nation will not have to go through brownouts at least uh, by the time you want to retire i hope yeah. that those problems already can be resolved with a long-term view and that may include nuclear power but that's probably going to be another very very debatable thing salamat po sa pagtangkilik uh, niyo sa gabing ito i hope magkaroon kayo ng mas magandang pananaw dito sa power problem and that is to realize that the problems cannot be solved tomorrow and so we all must have a longer perspective and give government a much better opportunity to find the right answers although i think they are already on the right track Salamat po sa tangkilik nyo. We'll see you next week. Thanks again, Serge, for being with us. Thank you. Uh, and uh, a lot of people are looking to you to provide a guiding light to our power problems. Thank you and God bless you. We'll see you next week. Buling ka ng aso. Kalabas. Hindi nga nililis naman ng pork barrel. Mga patay, papabigyan ko ng 5,000. So, hindi ko ang nagsasabi na hindi, dahil baka kunyari, lahat ng mga dismiss, mga hostage na lang para ma-reinstate.